Today's episode of Flash Reviews is a little bit different from usual. The five games I'll be reviewing today are all part of the Indie Mixtape, a compilation of lesser known indie games published on Steam by Curve Digital. Number 1. Hets. This is a very simple puzzle platformer in which you, an unnamed creature with an oversized ballistic weapon of some sort, have to destroy statues in the randomly generated levels in order to progress. At the end of every level you can choose from one of three upgrades, like a shield or the ability to fire faster. If I'm honest, I wasn't exactly enthralled with this game. It's a little bit like Downwell, but less interesting, with overly plentiful enemies, boring music and not particularly inspired gameplay. And having moving and aiming on the same stick can also be rather annoying at times. I suppose it's fun enough and the neon scribble art style is nothing if not unique, but the experience as a whole is just kind of boring. Overall, Hetz is a pretty standard randomly generated platformer let down by its lack of originality. There's very little in this game that hasn't been done better elsewhere, so in all honesty, this is one for hardcore fans of the genre, if anyone. Number 2. Laser Knights in this extremely bizarre game, you play as a space knight, and your goal is, quite simply, to kill other space knights. You're constantly moving forward and may choose to joust your opponents to death, shoot them with your trident laser, or grab one of the many weird and wacky power-ups that may appear every so often. It's a relatively simple concept, but most certainly a very entertaining one, and truth be told, this one is probably my favourite game of the entire mixtape. It's one of those games where you never really know what's going on, but whatever it is, it's pretty hilarious. Only the indie video game scene can come up with a game so profoundly bonkers and yet still so unusually fun whilst at the same time being so simplistic. It has a local multiplayer mode too, so I could see this game being a really fun way to, say, break the ice at parties. All in all, Laser Knights is crazy, frenetic and most importantly, one heck of a fun way to kill a few minutes. Also, Space Knights with laser tridents, what more do you want? Number 3. Roguelite this is a very lightweight and simple roguelike in which you play as a young girl exploring some ancient ruins with a bow that fires flaming arrows. You can also collect coins with which you can upgrade your bow whenever you die. As you can probably see, this game sports a Game Boy inspired 8-bit art style. That is something which a lot of indies do these days and which needs to be done really well to stand out, so in this game the art and the music I might add do come off as a bit old hat. That's not to say the gameplay isn't good though, mechanically it's mostly a typical platforming roguelike fare which isn't too difficult or unique in its own right, but the main mechanic is the player character's bow. Not only does it serve as a weapon, but it's also a necessary tool for lighting your way through the dark ruins so you can see enemies and items. I like the sort of twofold level of tension you get from this. Not only can you not see exactly what's in front of you even with a light, but you need to be very careful with your arrows lest you later be forced to wander into the pitch darkness to try and scrabble around for some more. So overall, Roguelite may at first glance look a bit generic, but there is a decent amount of enjoyment to be had here with the lighting mechanic coupled with the not overly challenging gameplay that makes this little Roguelite, at the very least, worth a look. Number 4. Test Chamber this is a puzzle game in which you, a small blocky creature, must solve puzzles to traverse your collapsing world and reach the infinite world. Gameplay wise, it's a Sokoban style game involving you pushing blocks around to reach the end goal of every level. The story in this game is pretty interesting, if a little abstract and I can appreciate it when effort goes into the story in a puzzle game, but if I'm honest, as it often is with puzzle games, Test Chamber is, for reasons I'm about to explain, extremely hard to actually review. I guess the puzzles in this game are fun enough and provide an interesting challenge, but that's all I can really say about it. It's also all I can really say about thousands and thousands of other puzzle games out there. It's almost like a cut and paste formula. Puzzle game with a unique mechanic, simplistic art style, maybe a mysterious story in there, rinse and repeat. The result of such a formula is that you get a game which works and doesn't do anything wrong, but there's just no reason to play it unless you really enjoy puzzle games like this. And that is pretty much my overall opinion of this game. It's alright, but it's damningly generic. There's tons of more interesting puzzle games out there, so why play this one in particular? Number 5. Detective Chirpums P.I. This is a visual novel set in a world inhabited by talking birds, which follows the investigations of one Detective Chirpums, a Sparrow private investigator in a city riddled with crime and corruption. It's a pretty typical Renpy Engine visual novel, and for the most part a pretty typical noir detective mystery story. Hardboiled detective with an attitude, world out to get him, clever high profile clients, slow jazz music, the main difference being, as I've said, that all the characters are talking birds. Now I'm not typically one for visual novels or point and click games, the sole exception being Ace Attorney, but I have to admit, this game is actually alright. 
It doesn't exactly innovate, but the story is fun to follow, the music is nice and relaxing, the character designs are rather pretty to look at, and it has just a tiny little bit of quirk for a little light flavour. To say the least, Detective Chirpums is an enjoyable little experience, and not a particularly heavy one too, so if you don't feel like doing too much thinking, then this one is a nice little distraction. Even if you aren't too keen on visual novels generally, and I especially recommend it if you're keen on your noir. So all in all, how is the indie mixtape as a compilation? Well, it has a few hits and a few misses, though I personally think it's worth it for Laser Nights and Roguelite alone. I'm not sure I'd be personally happy paying £7 for it, but if you like your indies, it's right up your alley. And with that, that is all for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. Join my Discord server, link below. Leave a comment if you liked it, leave a comment if you didn't like it. Either way, it means a lot to me. Be sure to ring the little bell by the subscribe button so you'll know when I've uploaded, and I will see you all next time. Ta-ta!